So mark the day off. Day is almost over, our first day. We are here to what is this? Okay. We're to interview the union boss. I guess this is him. Big dude. Before you is a walrus of a man seated <laughs> behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. A walrus of a man. Oh, his portrait he looks even derpier. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. With a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. Uh, sir, there's been a murder! Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. Uh, that's not the voice I expected him to have. Yes, a walrus of a man. Look at how derp his portrait is. I'm Everard, Everard Clare. Head of the Debardes Union here in Martinez. Here in Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? No, I don't. Sounds like just lazy. He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. <laughs> you go ahead, detective. Fine. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. Oh. Oh yeah, he did call me Mr. Dubois. Why are you calling me Mr. Dubois? Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner, as equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. I don't sit. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> no, I'll sit. I'll sit. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men... Reasonable men can be of great use to one another. Hmm. Try to wink back. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh, hey baby. Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. Whoa. This should take care of that nonsense. <laughs> it should be sufficient to cover your expenses oh, for a few yeah. days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. We can sleep. Go there ahead. Now. Take it. Wow, that's twenty-five real. Oh no, it's that's not good enough. money. You need it. Um hmm. Do you play ball with this dude? 25 real won't cover what we owe, but, but it will help. Don't mention it, but also don't forget it. I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> of course. Don't worry, 25 real is not enough to bribe He's me. He's not. Now, 
I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. How does he know? I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry, he actually meant, be very worried. Mm -hmm. Are you all right, Harry? You say you got this, Harry but Dubois. you seem a little anxious to me. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. All right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Don't panic. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? No. You're about to cry because you lost your gun and those children are going to shoot themselves with it. No, I'm not about to cry. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this? Mr. Dubois, he keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! Keep sliding down the chair like a jello shot. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? <laughs> Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Maybe you could use your hands somehow, in a kind of throw-in motion, like you're throwing that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. <laughs> now I'm good as it gets, Mr. Dubois. <laughs> then we throw it back at him. Don't be dramatic. I can see your condition isn't terminal. <laughs> What an odd demonstration of... Uh, you've got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. Um, let's see. I met Joyce, did I? Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. Maybe. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals? Yes. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin Eight. Don't feel like you shouldn't work with her just because you and I are such good friends. I'm not a jealous guy. Yeah, why haven't you let her in then? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. Okay, so yes, I'm a good negotiator. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this... Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, privacy. none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. It sings? Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. 
Let's talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Ains. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But? But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Let's do it. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Are we? Kim, is that true? Are we door-opening machines? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely <laughs> nothing shady about it. Yes, whenever you add absolutely nothing shady about it to the end of a sentence, it means that is absolutely the case. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Whose door? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. What do you mean by a weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Hmm. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Why don't you open it yourself? Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy okay, man, okay. Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? I'll look into it. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. If you know what I mean. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Yeah. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. Why are you calling Mr. Dubois? Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard. I call you Harry. So that's my name? My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean... See what his game is first. Yeah, I'm just testing you. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out with my big fat folder. Oh? Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. It's just a brown folder. You can't make out what's written on it. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Okay. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. Ooh. Hmm. About my family. Family? Harry. You're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man. Do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? Never mind. Family, family. Harry, is the most important thing in the world. What kind of a cop am I? It says... Oh, yes. Very interesting. It says you're more like a mad prophet than a cop. 
always rambling about the end of the world. I'm sure these stories are exaggerated. Exaggerated? <laughs> Effort, the time is now. We're looking at a catastrophic global loss of life. Of course, Harry. Sin, blood, death, catastrophic loss of life. All those things. And that's why you and I must be prepared. So let's talk about how we can help each other. He's probably just making a guess based on your recent activity in Montanese. Yeah, probably. Let's look at that folder again. As you look at the folder, Everard covers it with his hand and pets it. He's mm. hiding it from you because it's not a real RCM folder. It's just another one of those brown folders you saw in the file cabinet. That's not an RCM folder, silly. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Mm. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? That means he doesn't really know anything about you. Yeah, I got that logic. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Well, HDB matches my initials. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. Let's talk about my gun. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Could he really hold my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. <laughs> of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. Okay, okay. Later, man. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Great. Here. You're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Thanks, bro. Oh, okay. So he'll help us get our gun back. We just have to do some... some dirty jobs for him. Let's look at our tasks real quick. <laughs> okay, so we'll talk to Manana. Must be down the autopsy has to be finished and Kim has to be absent. Okay, so and then we pry off his boots. We need to talk to the guard. Now who can we ask around about the tattoos? Go talk to Joyce in the morning.
Okay. Easy enough. Sort of a happy cup. Okay. Don't like that he's calling me names. How do we get down from here? Okay. Go talk to Manana and uh... oh yeah. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you as you pick up the handset. Potential. The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Hmm. Dial a random number. It's unclear whether you actually have muscle memory. What? Right now, your finger is just drawing vaguely occult patterns in the air. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try again. Sure, later. why not? Muscle memory is a tricky thing. Man, even wearing my interface and gloves. Is there something else in here? The file cabinet stands steady as ever. Sliding out. A Remember, Leo. Everart's shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everart's plants. Sweet office floor. More banners. Mm. Special whirling borscht. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. The drawer slides. That must be important for something. Tattoos, bro. The unpromising race pupil returns. Yes, not. So, how'd you like our harbor? It's pretty cool. You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. That's enough. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. Right. You talk to the boss eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. And who killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? Hmm. He was killed with a, a harbor cargo belt. What a thought! Why would noble workers resort to such a thing? Unless they were pushed, of course. Your dead guy was an enemy combatant. What does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Interesting. I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men with all sorts of skills. Okay. He's not lying about not doing it himself. Understood. 
This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. Hmm. Okay. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. So what about a door? A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? A weasel door. Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. Hmm. I'm a hustle grinder. <laughs> I'm not so sure about the hustle grind, but... You know, it doesn't matter. It's a good thing you're doing. Thanks. What sure you're does. looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rags. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. Sure. None of this mess we're in. This jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. Yeah, well, should I know about this? I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhunt. Why are you striking? We're negotiating our share. Aye. How large a share? All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board, so they could take part in the decision-making process. Oh, okay. This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page, communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. Sure. Sure thing. This was great. You feel mentally reinvigorated. <laughs> Good talk. Oh, do you have something to tell me, Kim? We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. You haven't paid uh, Gert yet. You should take care of that, then. I don't have the money. Let's talk to him, anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Okay. Let's go pick Gart a little visit. We have multiple things to talk to Gart about. Oh, the racists have gone. Oh, yeah, I'll throw away bottles. Can I help you? I saw another thing. Another today. thing. Great. I love those. Yes. Oh, uh, man. About that money. Yes. Have you got it? Uh, can I pay up this check? You must be joking, right? You come here, trash everything, and now you try to pay with a novelty check? <laughs> well, yeah, look at it, man. This isn't a game show. 
I'm not going to accept it. You owe me cold, hard money. I want to see that money in the palm of my hand. Every single cent. You can cash it in at the local frit near the harbor gates, though it might not be enough to cover it. <sighs> Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Thank you, Ken. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed I've to I haven't drank all day. And... I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. Oh, Lieutenant. We're done here. Hmm. Let's see if I can get into my room still. Let's see if the frizza is still open, and then we'll go check the motor carriage. Um, is this about the questions again? Because yeah, here's I a novelty really, track. Uh, wow, I didn't know you worked for the union, sir. Awesome. Anything else I can do for you? Nope. No, you don't work for the union. The union works for you by supplying you with cash. Sure, rhetoric. That was easy. Worryingly so. Well, we're almost halfway to paying our bill. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Oh, okay. Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What are they? They are spinner hubcaps, frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real use for them, it's just for vanity. 
Honestly, that sounds like an amazing physics demonstration. I do appreciate the that. The lieutenant there. nods as you take the spinners. Radiant spinners. Okay, let's go pawn them for the shops. All those. Hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. I like to sell. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 Rael. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. Okay. Of course. I meant no offense. 200 Rael for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. Thank you. Nice. Here's the 100 Rael you need for your bill. <gasps> Do not Thank waste you. it. The rest is for him to compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners. Oh, did he... Anything did he else you're thinking of selling? A photo of a corpse. Oh, no. I don't like those kinds of objects. No sale. You know what the tattoos mean. A photic path. Counter radiance network, anti magnetism. It's darkness. That's all I know. Sell me something lighter. Okay. You have absolutely no idea what aphotic paths are, but the tattoos on the man are not that. Hmm. Another time, perhaps. Later, man. Another time, perhaps. Heck yeah, I can pay back my bill and I still have plenty left over. So thanks for just taking the big novelty check from the Union. I shouldn't have taken that, I guess. Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Well. Here it is, sorry for the trouble. Great, thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly bill in advance starting tomorrow. I'll unlock the electronic lock to your room. All the doors lock automatically at 9 p.m. Okay. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? Nope. Can I help you? <sighs> so just talk to him about the... So to talk about this, we have to give him his key back, don't we? You know what, let's do it. Can I help you? Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. 
I found the victim's clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Get some arm staff. Who else has access to keys? The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you, anyway. Hmm. What's on the staff? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Maybe you're sleepwalking or in a fugue state. I think fugue states are more your forte, officer. Yes. Okay. You've done some tasks. things I have here are. So let's see what's the ace is high. one authority <laughs> what do I have to get rid of to learn some of these I'm keeping hobo cop uh, for sure I think of reality. I guess would this get us sober? How does forgetting work? Do I like permanently lose this? I wish it explained a little bit more. What does this do again? Plus one pain threshold. Plus one conceptualization. Okay, that's I'm gonna look up forget.
Okay, so if we forget one of these, we do immediately learn, uh, lose, I mean, the increased caps and the conceptualization and the, the bonuses. But apparently, we get to keep, like, if, um, if I increase one of my psyche skills utilizing this increased cap and then forget this, it will lower my cap, but I'll keep the skill point invested in it, I guess. So my thoughts, looking at these, um, mostly is give, like, at least a plus one bonus and do something else helpful. Um, if I pick something here, then I'll get a plus one to something here that I know for sure because I'm picking it. Uh, whereas this, it's just sort of random, gotta hope that it's something useful. Might be worth using skill points to unlock as many of these as we can. Yeah, let's unlock. Confirm. Let's get a sober, maybe. Or maybe find out that we don't want to be sober. I'm assuming that won't keep ticking while we're asleep. This is the door to the room you redecorated. Okay. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. Sure thing, Kim. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum, then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation, but I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. I didn't know you smoked. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. Okay. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. How do you get so cool, Ken? You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. This man relishes his cool quite a bit. Below it all. He probably wanted to keep those spinners. I do feel bad. All right. Yes, it's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough. And we have solid leads to follow up on. Sure. Then you shot the body down, which was quite a shot. You know it. Oh. 
Damn straight. On this occasion, I must agree. We still have to perform the autopsy, though. And there's more work to be done in the crime scene. Okay, we'll do it in the morning. First thing. Now, night. as for interviews, my list of people to talk to here in Martinez, I mean. People are treacherous. But despite your misanthropy, we conducted an interview with Edward Claire. No small task. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. He's not saying much on the matter because he thinks you could have gotten more out of Everard. I'm trying to get him to tell us. Claire also helped you. How should I say it? Remember your name? That's a relief. It's a big relief. Moving on. <laughs> we talked to Joyce Messier, but didn't get any information from her. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard prison 41 practice? <sighs> That's how we roll in Precinct 41. No, no, I don't know why I do the things I do, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those hills. <laughs> nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. It goes with the orange. Huh. Thank you for the compliment. We could manage it even in wooden clogs. There are uncanny running reservoirs in this body. God knows why. So what are our powers? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. Sounds easy to abuse. Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. Okay. We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold sleep. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Uh, how do you know someone will show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. Okay. As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Who makes all rules? The coalition government, and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. Okay. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government formed the DRCM. The citizens. Be sentimental if you like. Either way, the Moralinton leases us the right to keep the peace in this city, and they will take it away if we misuse it. Or if they think you do. Where's the Moral Intern? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. I didn't know. How would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What's their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Hmm. Something kind and usual. Something almost self-explanatory. 
Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. I have an opinion. Do you? Things are bad out there. In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the EMI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. We have to make our own law. Spoken like a revolutionary, not a cop. But hypothetical aside, in Martinez we already are vigilantes. At least the Union thinks so. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. Can I romance Kim? That would be fantastic. Alright, time for bed. Maybe I can clean my room at some point. Yeah, see you in the morning, man. Bye. <laughs> stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. You see some lights shimmering outside, but it's difficult to make out the outlines of the buildings below. Dark phantoms with many tiny eyes, chaotically arranged and not looking at you. Okay. So I guess we can go to bed. I still don't know what that door is. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Locked. Electrochemistry. We could spend a skill point. Do we want high electrochemistry? Go to Party Planet. Hmm. Probably not important. I actually do, I think, want a point in visual calculus. Actually, what, uh, what... Where do I check what, um... Oh, it's on the map, ain't it? Yeah, it's okay. We have a really hard conceptualization thing. Composure. We can get this volition check, we might be able to unlock her easier. I want the visual calculus though. Oh man. Where is volition? There it is. Oh, we're very bad at this. Actually, maybe I should increase this. Oh, I can't increase like the. No. Hmm. Oh, 
It'll still be really hard, I think, even if we increase that. Maybe I'll just hold on to the points for now. The fan stands still. The lights are on. The lights are off again. The switch must be broken because oh. nothing happens. Well, that's a shame. I guess we can sneak out, right? While Ken is uh, sleeping. I wonder if we can get a pry bar from his car. Yeah, let's see if we can even access this card. Probably locked. Oh, it's not even here. Okay. Interesting. It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. So late and you're still here. I'm a night hawk. What can I say? She's still here because you're still here. Well, stinks for her. Why are you still here, Kuno? Uh, let's see. We didn't, we didn't finish looking at this. That's it. Fair enough. Doesn't my audio just get real weird just now? I'm gonna close my browser just to make sure I'm not on non memory or something. Let's talk to Kuno before he disappears for the night. Tell him he lied to us. Fuck, does Kuno care? I found your shack. Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase shifted in. Shit. 
shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You don't know that. You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? The tube of... Sure. It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? Magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. Come on, it's just magnesium. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Oh, okay. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. The pig head. Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Cool pig head. I liked it. I got one too. Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird level shit. <laughs> Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What I get is XP for that. Well played. No one saw that coming. What was that plate of powder? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. Oh, I've heard enough. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Talk to Manana. So? He said thank you. Uh, fuck. Okay. Kuno's a giver like that, yes? <laughs> Kuno sent your fat ass running around like jello. Look, pig. Kuno sent you to rough some people up. Kuno played you. That happened. Now you and Kuno Whoa. should move on. I will remember this, Kuno. You got fucked. You got fucked, pig. Fucked bad. No, I didn't. Of course you're going to remember this. Now get the fuck out of here. Grief in the Kuno. Grief in... After this shit, you better have something real interesting to say if you want to stay in Kuno's face. Yeah, real interesting. The gardener said not to listen to you. Pig, do you have any idea how fucking stupid that sounds? <laughs> Kuno gives you hot fucking leads, snitch bit style, and you come back griefing the Kuno. The fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, fat ass. Too small for you. Are they? The pants are totally okay. Don't listen to her. She's trying to give you body image problems. Empathy. He's on your crime scene, bossing you around. And he's been here for some time too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. I want to help bust a murder? Fuck no! What are you? Aww. Fucking mentally handicapped? A little bit. Kuno, they've almost made you a snitch now. Ease off, see? Kuno always takes the bullet over the hammer. What does that mean? He'd rather die than work with the justice system. Okay. Kuno doesn't fucking... Yeah, yeah, shut up, Kuno. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. Maybe. Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. I need to mag it up? You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. <laughs> One stroke? Don't be so modest. He's having one right now. You're saying I need to become a magnesium-based life form? Yes. If you want to live, you need to evolve. 
you need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Will it? <laughs> will it really? We got a thought for that. Oh god, this takes a long time to research. Mag it down. Maximum mag. Some people say magnesium doesn't even do anything. Hmm. That sounds like... Probably not super helpful. Oh, we can learn that really quick. Sure, let's become a magnesium based life form. We can do that before, uh, before 2 a.m. even. Let's see if I can sell whoop, some of this uh, garbage at the Fritta. Frit? Frit? Fritta? I don't know. One of them. Oh, okay, it's closed. Oh, everybody's gone. Ooh, coins. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad made machine is well kept for such an old machine. Pete. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. What kind of insignia? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. Oh, okay. A large metal pendant hangs from the rear view mirror. The pendant features a sun crown with wavy rays. It is a seal of royalist era Revachon. Interesting. The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. Ooh. The title reads, Man from Eelmdal in the Lost City of the Pygmies. Interesting. Let's see. Any more trash? Did we look at this? An old monument. Step. Oh, yeah, we did look at it. Oh, who are you? Ah, why can't I zoom out so far? The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. Excuse me, ma'am. I'd like to ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Snap. Where am I? Who are you? Are you alright? Uh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. What's so bad about the 50s? The men have these small jewels and everything is made out of plastic. Why do you need plastic when you can make the world out of amber? What? What else would you do? Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and cafes are filled with the young people. 
I was on my way to see a new Goyadeiro picture starring Gabriel Buenguerro. Oh. Until you came along, that is. Who's that? This is Gabriel Buenguerro. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And schoolboys used to memorize all his lines. Oh. In all likelihood, it's a world that's only ever existed in her mind. I've got some police questions. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. What are you hauling? Diamonds. Really? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Fair enough, it would. Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. Good enough. Is that all you wanted to know, low man? It's a boyadero. Of course not. To truly understand the boyadero, you need to listen to on the western plain. The boyadero, boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mesk. He is a rugged individualist and explorer. Okay. It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the Western Plain. They live happily ever after. Don't be stupid. The boy Adair returns from the Western Plain a changed man one night. As he and his beloved are out walking along the river, Margaret, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. In the background, you can hear the orchestra swell as the screen fills with the maiden's imploring eyes. I think I see where this is going. So the boy Adairo strangles his beloved and throws oh. her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off, because the western plain is calling to him. Beautiful. The most beautiful. A true boy Adairo needs a whole horizon to himself. He can be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boy Adairo. Interesting. What do you mean? You were in a dream. Yes. What about it? A pale dream is what it is. A pale dream. Well, thank yes, you. Yes, go. Enough jamboree. Jamboree? I need to get back to Mesky. What's this? Ruins. You sit on the wind-worn wooden planks of the bench. You're How much longer do we have on this thought? 17%? Ran in one hour. Okay, by like 12.30 we should be a magnesium-based life form. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito, bullet holes, and an RCM sticker. Fuck you. Ow. There is a hollow ring as you kick the box. It sounds like it's mostly empty. Your toe hurts now. Your toe has suffered damage. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> Good mail delivery, boss. I apologize. I just had to see what happened. The mail collection box has no faith in your psychopathic manipulations. 
this wall. I deserve to get hurt. Oh, so how are you doing, sir? You better watch your mouth around me, boy. Look at this again, can we? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Oh, we can try again. Yeah. Why? It's a wall. An ordinary wall. Hmm. We have items that increase our conceptualization. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Aww. Let's see. Oh, it's just gone. Magnesium. Okay, that's for our mental health. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? What do you know about these tattoos, lady? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. <sighs> Why? So you know something. Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. Oh, that's Everything. Right. right up to, but not including, trade secrets. What's your role? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. How's it going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Oh. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. <laughs> you mean Jean-Luc? Is that what his name was? Oh, so you've met him. Has he beguiled you with his inane theories? <laughs> They're wunderbar. They're nonsense. A load of tripe. But we were on the subject of the talks, I believe. Uh, so Shrek is connected to the lunch. Yes, I believe there is a connection. But that's a subject for later. Why is it talk for, why is it for later? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. Okay. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the Union in prior negotiations. Well, what happened? The Union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. What are they demanding? Ludicrous, even. It's meant. Oh. Uh, what happened to Gaumont? Mr. Clare told him to. How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Hmm. Yes. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. Well, what are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Every worker, a member of the board. Oh, yeah. 
Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. This does actually seem like a bad wait. In its defense, another said, demand democracy. Pretty tame stuff compared to every worker, a member of the board. Those some probably don't know what Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. <laughs> Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position, a hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. What about the scabs? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? Hmm. Don't let her answer it herself. Um. Yeah, let's call them strike breakers. If these strike breakers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not yet, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. What do you think of Everett? Everett Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Those are not mutually exclusive things. If you were to prick it with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe? No, a rapier. Sounds like you're about to take a rapier, too. Oh, heavens no! We get along just fine. Yet, now that you mention it, I can't stop imagining that black treacle just dribbling down his double chin. <laughs> yep. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, twin brother. more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Yes, Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman what? is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you oh, see, okay. with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. Are they actual twins, or is it just the one dude pretending that he's two people? Yeah, what about the union itself? The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. 20 years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Yeah. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A social smart? Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. What happened in the... Uh, I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Okay. Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work ever end of story hmm. this forewoman her name yeah what was her name sadly the company records do not even give a name she's just forewoman in private correspondence holly i don't even know if it's a sir or given name and i don't have access to the union's files Interesting. indeed 
The company suspects foul play, but there's nothing they could do. It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. All right. Of course. How else can I help? Why do I talk to ever? You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? I didn't. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually, corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic, verm-like corruption, reaching into the bowels of the earth. Hmm. Of course, I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a verm myself, but if you felt like passing some information, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Yeah. Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be... gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. He's helping me find my gun. I don't know why I would tell her this, but let's do it. Oh. That's so... helpful of him. So very, very helpful. And how is that going? Do you have any leads on that gun? He says it's almost ready to be found soon. Did he now? Well, then it should be any day now. Unless, of course, he's lying to you. Any- Hmm, perhaps he is. Of okay. course, detective. Should something come up later down the road? Until I will, then, I will, I will. Is there later. Any Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. What, wor what hard work? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't huh. make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. Ride till I die. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby. Gills. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. I have no idea what you're talking about anymore, man. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. I am a money printer. Yeah, I've made some kills. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself. Are you rich? Ooh. Not rich. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave, and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? That's a good question. Um. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every Damn time covered. you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Uh. 
Gontex is almost non-existent in the Gossam estate that is Rivershaw. I thought there were no taxes. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you <laughs> here. The Gossam estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking 98% of all your money. <gasps> oh, what? No frickin' way. Here you go, hustler. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. What the heck? <gasps> An indirect taxation. You're a cool anarchist now. Unless you don't want to be an anarchist. Whatever. <laughs> sure. Um. I mean, this sounds like a lot of fun, too, actually. Damn, I kind of want it. <sighs> okay, let's uh, become magnesium based first. We're over halfway there. This is the uh, door of the key for that's let's, let's unlock it. This must be it. The basement door is weather worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Oh boy. Do we do we knock? Hmm. Could we do this with um kin? Or because it's kind of like shady that we're doing this should be I mean Kim was there when we agreed to do it, I guess. Yeah, you try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. There's nothing else to do than to leave and tell Everard. No conceivable mm, reason. This is why we are purposes. not bringing Kim, right? There might be important information in the apartment. I mean. There might. I agree with logic. Logic dictates all of my actions. Hey, okay. what is this? What's this?
Magnesium. Suitcase full of clothes. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and potatoes. others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. What could that possibly mean? It looks like the artist is celebrating diversity, but underneath he's just making fun of these people. Okay. No, I'm not going to read that into everything. Uh... Of course, you slippery bastard. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, I guess. Of the yes, yellow man mug. Your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. The owner of this collection could be dumping his trash in the oh. Whirling's oh. container. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Interesting. Who knows? Could be. But this clothes in a trash lead doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere. Still, good thing to keep in mind. Very you could good. ask Everard who this person is once you're done here. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Brota. The what? Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. Sure. The vows are blurred and flesh. Blurred. Lower intestine. The term is metabolic and circulatory system. What's the hard stuff? Fascism, Brota. What? What is fascism? Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Rivershaw's problems? Um. None of these? Quit stalling, Bruta. We're talking about the weakest, worst, most insane thing. The weak link. Um, financiers. Yes, them. But also, women. What? Women. Men of woo. You woo. don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. What the fuck triggered this? That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that woo men need to know their place. <laughs> Get screenshot of this. What a strange game. Um, sure. You're going to keep your voos, right? Keep your voos, Brota. What could this possibly find? For the nation, smart. Best not to mention the woo men too often. The woo That's why you're the head and I am the stomach. Good stomach. Okay, let's see what the hell. Rival calling a nationhood. They're all socialists, especially the women. Lol? <laughs> what the heck? Okay, we have so many thoughts now. I don't even know, um...
what to do with them. Sure. I mean, this doesn't sound like fascism, to be honest. This sounds like just being really, really, I don't know, conservative. <sighs> well, we're almost done becoming magnesium-based life forms, and I'll decide what to be. <laughs> oh, I guess we want to, um... Yeah, I guess we want to, what was I about to say, um... This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. What's with the sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. What? It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Rivershaw got its flag. The flag accepts your honorable salute with quiet dignity. Um, hmm. Interesting. That's all from in here? Rivershaw. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, I guess we should go to bed as soon as this thing is done uh, learning. What's that? I want that. Balcony. Okay, this is where the janitor. Oh, no, I don't know. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Oh no, that's the door we need to um, to go to tomorrow. I wonder if now that we're wearing these glasses, we can go look at those footsteps again. Or did we already do that? Whoa. What have we here? What? It's the bridge. A bridge with loose nails and rot-infested wood that creaks in the wind. 
A construction code violation if there ever was one. I'm a badass. this an old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the east delta commerce center remshaw ice city slipstream you hear static from the intercom speaker it sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver but isn't saying anything. You can almost hear them breathe. Hello? Yes, hello. This is Tricentennial Electric. Have you come to place an order? Of course. She sounds almost antique, as if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. A receiver must not be working properly. Wait, but what happened to Slipstream SCA? There's no tricentennial electrics on the list. Oh my God. It's you. Oh my God. I didn't think what? I would hear your voice. She must be mistaking you for someone else. I'm so confused. Who cares that you don't remember her? Just go along with it. That's me. Michelle, just... Please. <laughs> Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. <laughs> of course I care. It's just I've been going through some tough time. Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally get again. Get what? She sounds like she's about to cry. Oh God, please don't cry. She doesn't answer. What's so nice about forgetting? Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. What just happened? Another seagull passes by. It's getting cold standing here, staring at the silent call box. Goodbye then. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Oh, what's the empty card? An old call box. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Hmm. About Fortress Accident. Silence. No one's home at Fortress Accident. You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. To happen to no pick one the one thing that actually call. works. You ring the doorbell, but nothing That's happens. That's pretty amazing. An off-key melody oh. starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Kuno, please stop calling here. Grown-ups don't have time for your stupid <laughs> game. She thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? There's a please, please open oh, the door. I'm sorry, officer. I thought you were. I'm just making a midnight visit. But the doorbell is broken, and the bookstore shouldn't even be on the list anymore. So I can't help you. Please don't call here again. Thanks. A single beep <laughs> indicates that the line has gone dead. Okay. Silence. No one answers your call. What about you, Gert? Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. Taxi? Looks like someone 
has melted half the plastic off with a lighter. Revishaw. Silence. No one answers the doorbell. Boxing. All you hear is static, but you ring the doorbell, but no one answers. What an ominous name for huh. a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. Or uh, oh, Andrew Orlando. That is a weird name. No, hold on. The last thing you need in your life is more hysteric emotions. Forget it. Find something else to do. <laughs> There are several footprints in the mud. Sitting at a desk, Lieutenant Kitsuragi fiddles with a pen, then writes something on the paper in front of him. He shouldn't be doing that. What? He should be here discussing the footprints. Okay, so I can't look at footprints without him. Got it. Okay, let's get back to our room. By the time we get to the room, we should have mastered um being magnesium based and then i'll decide between getting sober or becoming a fascist <laughs> sounds like a real fun choice i wonder if it does take over while we're asleep Maybe it's just like every night we can work on becoming sober and leave like the fun things for during the day. Really like to get into this door. I see I don't have a pry bar, do I? Oh, I can take seven swigs of this. Hmm. Oh, we're ninety six percent done. Uh, so I really want both of these, I think. I think they'll give me real fun, um, dialogue off. I could probably forget this one, though. Just need a little bit more time to pass. I, I could switch it to the other one just in case it does take over while I'm asleep. And then just go to sleep and I can finish this one in the morning. That makes sense. Let's, see, let's go back to this.
Wait, are these both ticking? Could be. How many skill points do we have? Two? Let's see if we can learn multiple things at once. Let's get this. And let's get this. I should have saved some of those for skill points. Oh well. So let's see how how does this work? So are all of these researching. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The option to go to sleep becomes available every night after 9 p.m. All in. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then sleep doesn't come. And then, sleep doesn't come. What? Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. It smells of alcohol and sweat and grease. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, belly. intimate and warm, breathing. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed? Something to do with... What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. Hmm. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images... Images start forming. Visit the crime scene. What's up, dude? Do you remember the scent of your childhood? I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Who? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth? What is this? You know who I am. I'm the bad day. The one where you ask her and then later in the streets wandering. It's the worst day of all time, Harry dear. And it's coming. She will hear about it on the phone. What? Reality will turn into a grotesque nightmare. This will be the last thing you did to her. Tell me, do you remember the love of your life? Um... Let's take some responsibility. Oh no, funky baby, you stayed. It was the rest of it that lived. Or you just stood there, with one hand on the bottle and the other on your dick, watching it go. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? I don't know, man. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me.
You found Elysium. Disco Elysium. Everything. The pile and the Isolus. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You limbic system. I needed that. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? Trying to solve a case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. New type? Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head. Like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. Huh. Good going, buddy. What the hell was that? Oh, just a dream. You have ones like that all the time. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. Why is this happening? It's just that your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. You're too weak to say no now. Waking up is the worst part. Maybe somewhere down the line you could decline. No. Uh, that's, that's not. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. Nah, I'm good. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. 
Magnesium-based life form. We tell them, hell no. You're about to become a magnesium-based life form. The age of the primitive carbon man is done. No longer must mankind rely on slow working background radiation to take us further into our genetic destiny. This is the era of guided evolution and magnesium is the key. You are the first of your species. The next step in human evolution. An advanced magnesium proto-man who mags it up, drinks it down, and sniffs it sideways. Sure. Let's do volition. Maybe I can go talk to Joyce again, then. Sadly, it does not look like the night ticked over uh, camp. I guess only wake waking time goes towards this. Oh well. Let's look in the mirror again. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Roof, uh... Gart will fix our window ever. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union mess all turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. Here, are these the ones Gart told us. I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. Okay. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. Let's roll, one baby. more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them. Continue with our business. But why? Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. No, let's go talk to them. Aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? I am. They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Oh, uh, hello, hello, you. Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. What's wrong, man? And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Good day, ma'am. Oh, please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. Why do you need it? You to let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. Hmm. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Um. That's, gone this That's way. just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. More important than a missing expedition? I don't know. Expeditions often lead to something interesting. Now tell me more. Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. 
He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. What type but of insect? They should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He no, said they, they'd they be back though. on There's Monday. There's a sign blocking it. What could be keeping them? The water lock that was broken. Could this be it? Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Got some technical problems. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful to both of you. You've spared me another sleepless night. You're welcome, ma'am. I hate yeah. to ask, but if your investigation takes you to the other side of the coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. I will. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk up that vanilla murder investigation. <laughs> and if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. Yeah, no problem. Oh, you're such a dear. Thank you, sweetie. What about this rare insect? Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. But I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. No, I want to hear it. What L? It's a phasmid, technically, but... Ah, yes. Phasmatodia. A diverse group of insects whose bodies resemble twigs, leaves, that sort of thing. Ghost insects. Okay. Colloquially. Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insulindian coast. That's pretty Hence cool. Hence its name, the Insulindian phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the phasmid with us, officers. I would like to. to be honest, this animal sounds like a cryptid. You wouldn't happen to be searching for some kind of no, gnome of Jeroma, would you? I smell pseudoscience, he's thinking. Not a big it fan It sounds of like that. a perfectly reasonable bug. It's simply elusive. So much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. Establishment. I thought so. What makes you think it's around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that That's looks like the reeds. Oh, you're going. Gary on. sent us the clipping. Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly, and they didn't even know what they were looking at. Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. Seem really excited. I suppose I have something of a personal connection to the Insul Indian phasmid. All scientists have their little hobby horses. I don't get why this is so weird. Like, leaf bugs and stick bugs are, like, perfectly normal things. A bug that looks like a reed doesn't sound far-fetched. So they have cool powers. Yes, it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years, centuries even. It's dangerous. <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? What's so special about it? Oh dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, what is this? Wow, you're pretty good at chopping. You see a heavy steel. The man ponders his cooking utensils and gives you a little nod, acknowledging your presence. Yeah, do you know what's behind that door? He looks up at you, then looks away quickly. Shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door.
Oh yeah, I'm not gonna set that. I guess I do have a lot of penalties while I'm uh, internalizing these. Oh, we can try this again, though, right? Let me handle this. You seem a little different today. Less hospitable. Hmm. You are far from home, Lieutenant. This isn't a district known for its love of self-proclaimed militiamen. I mean, no trouble. Not a muscle moves in her face, but her eyes trace yours, stern and perceptive. You are looking for Titus Hardy, who you think has information on a murder the RCM is investigating. You want to interview him. Titus Hardy? That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. I still do it though. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Now what is your role in us? Obviously, I'm a lawyer. A legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. I would urge you to consider what you say to my clients. Okay. Let's see, does this guy have any insight besides money? Ooh, is that bottle pick up a book? Here, all right, give me your tea, this. this is where you say your bed. Didn't Monica have giant titties? What? Detective. Um, and we talked about the hangman. Oh, this is about ham. A real looker, that one. Well, you sure took your time, huh? Waited for him to get real ripe and pretty for you. Oh, like him. Oh, he was a real pretty boy. Hanging up there, letting out that pretty boy smell. I can't for the life of me understand why you did it. I mean, I would have just left him up there. You must really like cleaning up other people. People's shit. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. No, no, no. Eyes here. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. Hmm. He understood what you were doing. Taking inventory of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy. Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. Yeah, Dennis, What's calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> you're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Fat Angus. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late to stop you. You've already got them all. Including the old bearded man who's smart enough to smoke instead of talking. As you can see, he doesn't speak a lot, and you almost missed him among the others. Hmm. That's enough to take another look at those tracks in the yard. See oh, if they okay. fit this band of miscreants. And did you do this? The pretty boy. You guys really love 
talking about that pretty boy. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Was there a container belt? Container belt? Like we use in the harbor? Yeah. Because we took it from the harbor where we worked. Then we went out back and used it to hang him. We did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why there's a container belt around his neck. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take them all away. It's too simple. There is no catch. These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what huh. happened, so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. Yeah, why? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. And he stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Yeah. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. ex oranese special forces. A live grenade. Right here in our bar. I can't prove it. But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. They actually doing wrong. Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. From rape to harassment to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? To kill us all if we don't open the gates. If we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. He started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grabbed one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Hmm. Yeah, this girl's on the mic, a beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake, the fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Okay. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? There's something odd here. Very. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. No. You're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Okay. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Let's we'll see if, if this lines Wasn't up with our autopsy. Obvious copper. Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? This is where an autopsy would come in handy. You have to work with what you know. Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. We overpowered him, dragged his unconscious body to the tree, put a noose around his neck, and hanged him till he was dead and steady. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. Okay. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first, then see if it all adds up. Actually, they're admirably, surprisingly composed. Yeah the entire room, given how many questions you've lobbed their way. Well, this one, but he's always fidgeting, 
So don't get your hopes up. We did this over there. Weren't you fucking listening? The fucker came to our bar. It happened right here. Huh. With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Like what, copper? When did it You don't have to answer any of his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How did you know? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? Yeah. By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. What? But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. Yeah, I am going That's to That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. Nope. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Let's see you try. Forget about the games. You've mapped out the characters. Reading the footprints in the yard should be easier now. Establish authority. Yes. Authority. Feverish thoughts race through oh, her no. mind. Oops. And what exactly is it you've been doing that's so goddamn special? Shitting yourself in front of us. Going around, harassing kids on the street. Kids who've done nothing wrong. Uh, I mean, those kids suck, though. All the while talking racist shit. Don't think we aren't watching fascia. People here trust us. We're getting complaints. Fascia. That's short for fascist. I haven't actually said anything fascist. Of course you have. You've been calling people kip left and right. No, I haven't. Citing race violence in my town. Kali said they've been trying to set up a race rally, whatever the fuck that means, trying to get the kips out of Revishaw before the economy goes to shit. Sure there is. Kali said they're both purchasing in confetti, ribbons too, and loudspeakers, and fireworks. Kali works at the carnival shop, you see. Get the fuck out of here, you racist carny. There'll be no <laughs> race rally in my town. What happened? We got absolutely wiped. Let's go before it gets worse. Yeah, no What's idea going what that was. On? Are you racist now? Is the rally real? Please don't set up any rally. It will make you look awful. <laughs> Great. Oh, uh, let's go look at those tracks again. Let's see. 
there are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from six to 12 pairs have walked here. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? That's right. The Hardy Boys in the mess hall of whirling in rags. Let's go with them. One, standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick, Titus Hardy. The one with the ball cap on his head. Okay. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy. Maybe even too easy. Looks like we have eight tracks. Oh, because of them. Standard work boot. Hmm. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. So I don't know what a plectrum is. Three. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 43. The inked banger, perhaps. Four. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. Five. Another standard work boot. Reinforced toes. Number 44. Same as before. Either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. Six. Light as air. Same make of boot. But number 41. Small like a rat. Shanky. Okay. You're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. It is strangely beautiful. Seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. Carrying something? Yeah, I guess carrying the body. Eight. Another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth Hardy Boy. The right sole. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out of the ordinary? Not really. Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. Yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. 200. This could be the combined weight of two people. One carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a fat hardy boy, the one sitting yep. in the middle. All right, put all this together, Kim. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Hmm. But why? Why did they have to carry yes, him? Yes, they could have used the, the makeshift drug stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. We know he wasn't conscious. Even easier to carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else can you see? An aberration. Interesting. Let's name it the Old Soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy Boy. Wonder who he is. I wonder as well. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? Interesting. No, it's not. Forget I said it. We are not looking for a drummer. We could be. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops. Let's try an inland empire this the thing again. The man lies on his side. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses 
and takes a deep breath. Who are you? The fish lips stay Damn. silent in response. You must be losing your mind, asking him that over and I am. over. I told you, he is male, 40 to 50, <laughs> with an athletic build. I'll go open my ledger. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Sure. That's you. HDB. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. Just lies there. The next box says... KK57-08. Sure. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. 57 equals Precinct 57, followed by his date, 0803, and time of arrival, 0815, on the scene. He's indexed oh, okay. the case after himself, not you. That's, That's fine. because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. We know my initials, though. Technically, I remember. What would that make the alphanumeric? HDB 41. 0803. Help me out with the time of day anyway. Oh yeah, I don't know the time 10, of day. 1015. It's understated. Oh. Good. Let's go with that. Sure. Wait, wouldn't that put me as arriving two hours after him? Wasn't the whole point that um I said that I got on the scene first? Whatever. NA. Next. N.A. Hmm. Roughly 50. Sure. Dry 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. Yeah, this cow doesn't lead me astray. Let's... He nods. 42. Mondial. What was that Fair mean? to olive skin from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say... Whitish. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither mondial nor anything other. <laughs> fucky, fucky! Law. Mail. <laughs> Pigs could have sex! <laughs> nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Sure. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non-applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. HDB 41-0803.1015. Listens. None. At least not after the initial examination. Um, what exactly is true? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post mortem. It did look like he was dragged They'd over. have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained dog walkers. Your central mm. nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform, then. We should start the post-mortem. Sure. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. Well, let's look. Clothes. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. <gasps> see? It's happening? <laughs> Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Whoa. The rest of the clothes have been removed post mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them oh, for yourself, true. as you ought to, 
You have deserved them more than anyone else. Yeah, I'm at the, the boat has a serial number. It's E50.100.100. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alpha. Why would I, I wouldn't the understand if I'm omitting the boot. By the design. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Yeah, let's write it. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs, consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking <laughs> about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Ligature mark. Oh, okay. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. Yeah, I can try. It's no use. We should get chain cutters. You can try with them. I have a pair in the toolbox of my kinema. Sure. Damn corpse. We had a good rhythm going. That's okay. Well, I need to go make dinner. So I think I will do just that. And we will uh, carry on from here. Um, Thursday. In the morning light, the white on blue police livery on the motor carriage cannot but catch your eye. Huh. Do something important? Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. This so. is a Caprice Kanema. The Caprice Motor Corps follow up to their highly successful workhorse, Caprice 40, and the answer to the Lums racing breed, Ferv series. With its air cooled, rear mounted 12 cylinder compression ignition engine driving the rear wheels through a four speed manual gearbox, the Kanema is able to reach 100 kilometers per hour in 13.5 seconds and go on to a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour. The high center of balance is offset by a large battery bank mounted oh, okay. at the bottom of the cabin, feeding all the auxiliary systems and making the Kanema effectively a mobile power plant. That's pretty cool, actually. Due to a quite steep price tag, it is very unusual to see one in police livery. That's yeah, a cool, mm -hmm. cool vehicle. You want to take a closer look? Heck yeah. 130. I reckon that's a 7 liter V12 there. Man, that's got to be a major advancement over the KR18GU engine on the old Caprice 40. <laughs> sure, that's just uh, repeat interfacing. 7.2. Supercharge. Yes, an extraordinary machine. Okay. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. Helium headlights would improve the range and quality of the visual field a lot. Sure, I've thought about switching to helium. Actually, I have a pair at home. Just haven't gotten around to fitting them yet. I need to lay some wiring for the ballast first. Maybe. Yes, definitely maybe. Definitely maybe. And means no. 
Sure. Um, Cap Sav, you can see he was definitely going to put those spinners on it, wasn't he? Oh, well. A uh, new save. Cool. We'll do more on Thursday. Peace out.